I guess if I if I wasn't with my children, I might have burst out crying. But I guess once a mum, always a mum. And I was concerned about their welfare. Um, so, yeah, I was extremely sad the moment it happened. And also part of me, the longing to tell her why she was ill, because she never found out. Um, that day, yeah, it, it was very, very, very over, over, overwhelming. I remember there was a mo there was a bit of me that felt, yes, we finally done it, because Ella's the first person in the world to have air pollution on her death certificate. Um, there was lots of media on that day. I think at that time, I was incredibly hopeful. And what I mean, what I mean by that is we had this verdict, and I thought a lot more would change than it has. Um, and I think my feelings have gone from sadness, um, a little bit of anger, frustration, but I haven't given up hope that tomorrow will be a brighter day. I think my frustration was to get such a comprehensive verdict and I felt the government would do a lot more than they did. Um, the coroner's first recommendation, PM 2.5, and he was very clear that if the government don't do something about it, more children would die. And he meant immediately, all that's happened is it didn't even make it into the Environment Act and it's going out for consultation. So that's immense disappointment. And I see all the good work she, you know, her death has brought about. So she hasn't died in vain, but the fact that children still continue to die today means it's far from resolved. And I was asked yesterday at a carol service about what did I think about COP26? Um, I'm an optimist deep down and I think even small changes or it's going to need small changes that get us there but I do feel it was a moment that we let go by and I think I was so shocked at the difference between phase out and phase down how much governments all around the world held on to that and I do think going forward we need to use the law to fight for children's rights to breathe clean air, because I don't think this has still hit governments yet. They're still not held accountable. And if they were, I don't think phase out or phase down will even be a thing. They have a responsibility to their citizens and I wish they would see that or all the suffering that people are going through now. And I think my biggest point, my, one of my biggest disappointments in the year had to be at COP when India were saying it will take them to 2070. And I thought about all the children who would die and all the illnesses that will happen in the next 50 years. And I, I realized that this is not acceptable. So we continue to fight. We fight every single day in our own little ways. And um, the idea is to amass a movement worldwide of mums everywhere to say enough is enough. We our children can't continue to be ill. We can't continue as, as nations to have poor healthcare. You know, governments spend trillions on healthcare. And if they put that money into cleaning up the air, people would have better, better qualities of life. I will continue my campaigning on raising awareness about fossil fuels. That's what PM 2.5 really is. It's from cars and they are so detrimental to all our health. Also, I, I feel the consultation, I take it on a personal level. So I will be going out there raising awareness to make sure people are aware of the consultation and why it's so important for their health. And especially in times of COVID, when we know the virus is airborne, we must do everything within our power to clean up the, the air. That's really, really, really important. And 
we can't say it enough times fossil fuels are killing us we look in our hospitals we look at our health records you know cardiac arrests have been linked dementia um strokes and yet very little action from governments it's not just the uk government i i, I wouldn't want anyone to think this is just a uk problem and that's why i decided today on the anniversary of the coroner's verdict to do this video to yet again remind people this matter is far from solved i am aware air pollution is an invisible killer a bit like covid a silent killer so it's important at every opportunity to raise this amongst the public. The public must demand action, must, it is a must, from their MPs, councillors. Um, it is unacceptable that 10% of the population have asthma and 250,000 children in London have it and 1.1 million children all over the UK. Every year, up to 26 children still die. This is unacceptable. So on this anniversary, we, we remember fondly the coroner's verdict. And it was so important to the movement to finally get this on a death certificate. There have been many debates before this verdict. And so now it has been settled. So it's good to remember, and it is a positive thing, but my disappointment, as I said, is the lack of action worldwide. Ella has shown, you know, through her inquest, we've shown how much she suffered and people everywhere joined me and were wishing us well, but I, I wish that so much more um, will be done to help people, but we can't give up the, the fight. We have the youth action going on, we have the, the mums and we are only going to get bigger. So I, I urge everyone to come and join me for us to multiply and to urge government for action. On Sunday, January the 23rd, it is on the eve of what would have been Ella's 18th birthday. We're going to do a candlelight vigil at Mansfield Park, which is just off the South Circular in Lewisham, SE6. Um, it starts at 3.30. Um, we, we, are, we have invited the Mayor of Lewisham to speak, and I hope some campaigners will come and speak. And we hope to see some MPs there to remind us or of what Ella has contributed to the movement. Um, the fact that she is not here, we have not forgotten her. And also to make a statement to parliament that we want action now, that enough is enough. 